and it's just you. Well, times can be tough. Yeah, um, man. so look, the main event, whew, man, I gotta say, man, I, I bet I put money down. Um, I, I put a bar lay down and you told me once again, you're right. you I really should listen to you because I don't think you're really ever wrong with your picture. Pretty good, Mike. Yeah. I'm always wrong on TV though. Cause on TV, I kind of skew it a little bit because I take people's personal feelings into consideration mm. because I know for a fact, uh, obviously because I fight myself when you're in the locker room. The pre-fight show, the Fox pre-fight show, errs in the locker room. And sometimes, you know, if, if a guy's rooting against you, it can affect your psyche, it can affect your confidence. It can just bring negative energy into the room. And, of course, if you know that person as well, and, you know, obviously I work with Daniel Cormier a lot over at Fox, um, it's kind of a dick move as well. So, you know, I did predict Cormier to win. And, you know, on TV I predicted Cormier to win. I thought in my heart of hearts, John Jones would do it, but I didn't want to put that 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 those bad vibes out there. You know what I'm saying? I want to project positivity towards him because realistically, that first fight was pretty close. The first three rounds, DC did an amazing job. Okay, four and five, he clearly lost. But the case for me saying DC was going to win wasn't purely based on I'm trying to do a solid right. to a friend. Of course. You know, you know what I mean? That, was, that wasn't me being a complete sellout and disrespecting Jones or DC. I, I, I could see DC winning the fight. And because it was so close in my mind, I thought I at least owe him that respect to put that out there. So that's why I did pick DC. But, you know, if someone put a gun to my head and said, who wins, DC or Jones? I'd have said Jones. I yeah. would have said Jones. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I mean, look, I was kind of torn on it. And part of me was picking. Um, I kind of I don't want to say pick with my heart, but I, I'm kind of picking for who I'm rooting for. There's always a part of me that kind of is looking for the angle for the guy that I want to win. So you start to convince yourself, like, oh, this is how he can do it. And the layoff was a big deal, you know, you know, 15-month layoff. Last time we saw him after a 13-month layoff, we saw, you know, a little bit of tentativeness out of John Jones against OSP. Um, so that's kind of why I said, you know what, I think Cormier's looked better than ever. I think he can do it. And not for nothing, Cormier looked better than ever in this fight. In my opinion, that was the best Daniel Cormier we've ever seen. But John Jones was not tentative. John Jones came out right out the gate and brought it right to him. It was so incredible to watch John Jones come out and look like he was getting dirty. Throw caution to the well, wind, really get fucking aggressive. John Jones was not as aggressive in the opening rounds, if I'm not mistaken, in his past fights. And that was like, like it was super impressive. I was very impressed with John well, Jones. Well, 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 I don't know. And, and a lot of people have said this to me on Twitter. And if I'm wrong, please point it out. But I kind of feel differently. I kind of feel like um, it wasn't a very good John Jones that we were seeing. Yeah, Daniel Cormier looked well. I thought Daniel won the first round. I thought he won the second round. And I think he was on track to win the third round as well. Yes, Jones was, um, he was, he was focusing on the legs a lot. He was focusing on the oblique kicks to the thighs, the front kick to the thighs, the stomping kicks, a lot of leg kicks and a lot of elbows as, uh, as uh, jo uh, sorry, Daniel tried to close the distance. And I found it very frustrating to watch. Um, in the first fight, at the end of round three, Greg Jackson told John Jones, Play Tom and Jerry. Get on your bike. Stop DC from closing the distance because DC has to close the distance to fight to fight John Jones. John Jones' his reach is 84 inches long, the longest in the UFC. It's a 12-inch reach advantage. Uh, so DC has to close the distance. So the plan was for him to stay on the bike, stay on the outside, which he which he was doing, but he wasn't using the fundamentals. He wasn't using any jabs, any straight shots, any right hands. And I found myself being very frustrated watching it because a guy with an 84-inch reach, with a 12-inch reach advantage, could have made, not easy work, but could have made the fight a lot easier because DC was getting in, he was connecting with some hooks, and he was pressuring Jones very well. And I, as I say, I found myself being a little frustrated. I was like, why the fuck is he focusing on all these bitchy little kicks to the thighs and this and that? Why isn't he going with, boom, stick a jab in his face, stick a jab in his face, one, two, then go to a low kick or whatever you want to do. But give me some fundamentals. Give me some snapping jabs. If you jab someone in the face really hard, you'll soon find that they stop chasing you down because it fucking hurts when somebody sticks a jab on the end of your nose. You know what I mean? Um, so I did find myself getting frustrated. Everyone at the Fox Studios, obviously, DC works. So everyone was getting very excited. And the reason I say DC uh, was a victim of his own success is because he was being successful, he was getting on the inside, he was landing shots, and he did have D uh, Jones backing up. Now, the reason Jones was backing up is because he was trying to avoid the clinch, and he was using a smart game plan. But I think DC took that as a sign of weakness 
and he started getting a little reckless as he was chasing him down. He started smiling a little too much and yada, yada, yada. And as he was backing up, the hands were low. The head kick came high. And as we know, that was the end of the fight. Had, had he uh, not been so complacent or maybe fall into the trap a little bit, it might have been a little bit different. Well, but an interesting thing I saw this morning was that they were actually talking about DC getting caught by head kicks at an earlier press conference. And John Jones was like, yeah, don't worry, I'm going to kick you in the face. And, of course, that absolutely happened. What were you going to say? Well, you know, so, because, so, yeah, all right, maybe, you look, you know the technical side of fighting much more than I know, right? But, you know, I guess those little bullshit kicks to the knees and the legs and the thighs, you know, I guess they really work because he set him up for well, three rounds and then went high and knocked him the fuck out, you know? Well, but you, but, well, exactly. You know what I mean? I mean, as I say, I mean, I probably won't be Jones' favorite person if he watches back the Fox Sports post-fight show because I said that. I said, listen... The knockout was phenomenal. The finish was unbelievable. We've never seen uh, DC, well, he's, he's only ever been beaten by John Jones, and certainly we've, he's never been finished. And it was an emphatic finish with a real stamp on it, you know what I mean? It, it couldn't have been any better or for, for John Jones or any worse for DC. So in that regard, it was sensational. It was fantastic. But I did say I was frustrated by his performance. I thought he could have fought better. Um, but as I say, I mean, ultimately he got the job done and, you know, made me eat my words. But, um, you know, I did, yeah, yeah, I, I wasn't blown away by the performance, but, oh, but maybe that was the plan. Maybe the plan was to focus on the low kick so much, focus on the legs, the knees, this and that, yada, 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 and then boom, go high. And if that was the plan, if that was the plan, then God bless him because yeah. it worked beautifully. Um, but I that thought... was one of the hardest things, you know, to see... DC put down like that to see how much this meant to him to see you know I mean of course him being the champion now and D, uh, John Jones saying throughout the whole time you're not the champion and this and that and jo DC having to validate himself as being a worthy champion had to beat John Jones he got beaten he got knocked out obviously we had the scene afterwards it, it, it was tough, man, and, and being in the studios, because all those guys in the studios, they're all very friendly with him to see how upset everyone there was. Yeah. I can only imagine his family at home. Yeah, it, it, it was crushing, a crushing, crushing defeat for Daniel Cormier. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. It's like, you know, uh, you know, it, it really does. You start to look at the title reign, and you go, all right, is does it delegitimize that title reign? And in my opinion, if I'm speaking very fairly, it kind of does. He never beat John well, Jones for the yeah, title. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to put that out there, but if you bring it up, then yeah, yeah I guess, because he got, he did he did beat him the first time. But listen, he was stripped. He was stripped, so that means that for that period of time, Daniel Cormier was the champion. Mm -hmm. You can't take that away. Um, he was, was, he he was really John the champion, but... No, no, he wasn't able to beat John Jones. We know that. He has to look in the mirror, you know, and this is, I think, why it becomes so emotional, because, like, obviously, number one, getting your ass kicked on TV like that, getting knocked out in front of your friends, family... Look, it's part of the job as well. He had never been stopped before. He had only tasted defeat at the hands of John Jones, and it was a decision. So I'm sure that's a, a very emotional thing as well. Um, but you're playing in that moment. You know, they wake you up. You know, first of all, he—I mean, he probably thought he was in strike force in that moment. He was like, "What happened? Did I win the tournament?" He had no idea where yeah. he was. It was over. But you wake up and you go, "Holy shit, dude! The past two years of my life was this for fucking nothing? Did I just lose this belt?" I never beat this guy. He was right the whole time when he's telling me, like, yeah, dude, you're not really the champion. That has to fucking really crush your spirits. Well, it does. And I came home, and as I said, my wife and my kids, they all went to the fight, bloody in the VIP section whilst I'm working. Didn't even get a thank you, but no big deal. I'm joking. Huh. But uh, I came home, had a quick glass of wine before we all went to bed, and I'm talking to everybody, did you enjoy it, this, that. And we got, obviously, talking about Daniel Cormier, and I, I felt so bad for him, obviously, you know. I mean, we're not close, close friends, but, you know, we're professional friends, you know. So uh, I, I feel bad for the guy. I like the guy. And I found myself, like, really going into it, and I was feeling sorry for him. And, and then after a bit, I kind of said, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Let's just break this down. Let's be honest. He fought for the title against Anthony Johnson. Well, sorry, pardon me. He fought for the title against John Jones on a card that did 800,000 pay-per-view buys, and he lost by decision. But, but in doing so, he would have earned a shit ton of money. Then he fought on a big fight card against Anthony Johnson for the title, would have got pay-per-view, earned a ton of cash for that. Then he defended against uh, Gustafsson in another pay-per-view event where he would have made God knows how much money. Then he fought on UFC 200, which did over a million buys against Anderson Silva, got a ton of money for that. You know, we're talking several million dollars here. Then he 
fights Johnson again in another big fight card. Again, we're, we're, we're talking a lot of money here. And then he fights on this fight card at the weekend, which is, um, uh, Dana Sense trending over a million buys. So in that period of fighting for the title and being the champion, he's made millions and millions of dollars. You know, probably, you know, I, I, I would guess seven, six to seven million dollars in a couple of years, maybe more, may, may, maybe close to ten million dollars. Who knows? Um, and I, and I was, I was feeling sorry for him, but then I said, hold on a minute. At the end of the day, we do it. We go in there. We do it for money. He's earned a shit ton of money. He's been the champion, um, and he's lost. And and he's a grown ass man, and he'll deal with it. There's no need to sit here feeling sorry for him. He he probably doesn't want that anyway. Yeah. Uh, and and I, as I said at the end of the day, were people feeling sorry for me when I've been knocked out? I've I've been knocked out. I've lost fights. Have I've you? lost number one contender matchups. No one gives a fuck. No one gives a fuck about me. So I said, because yeah, you didn't start I'm, crying. I'm not, spending, I'm not spending too long dwelling on on, on anybody Mike, else losing a fight. You, you know, gotta, I feel you gotta, sorry for the guy. If you ever lose again, won. you got to fucking cry in the middle of the octagon, and then everyone's gonna feel bad for you. Yeah, but you know, he shouldn't have done that. You thought it was bad. Well, dude, Rogan feels bad for no, interviewing I, I, him. No, I thought it was bad because I, I don't mean. Li listen. I've never cried when I've lost a fight, okay? That's not what I'm saying, though. What I'm saying is because of how much they dislike one another, and for as classy as John Jones can be inside the octagon, don't tell me that that wasn't the ultimate fucking revenge for John Jones to see DC crying. Oh. So what I mean is that we should have handled that better. Was try and save that for the private moment. Jesus Christ. Well, save John Jones would make fun of but him. But it just been scrambled. What? John Jones made fun of him so much for crying the last time. No, I know. That, that's what I'm saying. Oh. That's what I'm saying. It's bad. I mean, it would have been good had he had avoided it. But, you know, obviously he wasn't thinking straight. It was highly emotional. He'd just been knocked out. You don't know where you are when you've been knocked out. I'll mm. tell you that right now. You don't, you're not fully, even though you're back on your feet and you're talking to Joe Rogan and all this, you still don't know what the fuck is going on. And by the way, that was a bad knockout because I was disgusted. I mean, John McCarthy is a fantastic referee and I respect the fact that he was trying to give DC enough time to recover because I think that's what he was doing. But from the shot that knocked him out, there was five other very, very hard blows that DC, uh, you know, took to the side or the back of the head, man. They mm. were heavy blows and five more. So DC didn't know what the fuck was going on. So it wasn't a conscious decision. So I do feel sorry for the guy in that regard. Um, because let me tell you, you don't know where you are. I mean, have I ever yeah. told you the story about me after I got knocked out against Dan Henderson? Uh, no, what happened? Oh, well, well. Well, I'm, I'm, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I've been knocked out so much, and I shouldn't say the story because it gives all the, the, the Henderson fans and the Bisping haters, you know, a, a reason to make fun of me. But, like, I'm back in my dressing room after being knocked out. I don't know what's gone on. I couldn't understand that I just fought. And everyone was saying to, saying to me, Michael, you just fought, you lost. And I'm like, well, hold on. I'm not fighting for two or three months. And I was like, in my mind, I'm like, am I? Did, did I step in last minute? Because I'm not supposed to fight for two months. And they go, no, Michael, Michael, you, uh, you've been knocked out. I'm like, oh, right, right, I'm okay, I'm okay. Oh, I get it. So then I went to the shower, and then my manager at the time, I'm like, come here, come here. And he come around the corner. I said, what's going on? He said, Michael, you just fought Dan Henderson. You've been knocked out. Ah, oh, oh, okay, okay. And then I get in the shower. Then I come out, and I walk out. I say, hey, come here. I said, what's going on? I said, Jesus, Michael, you've been knocked out. You fought Dan Henderson. And I kept forgetting it over and over again. I would, I I do, like, by the third time, I would have been like, nah, dude, no, you, you just well, fucked listen, Dan Henderson's like, wife Michael, right in front of him. Need, you need to go to the hospital. I'm like, I'm not going to the hospital. He's like, no, Michael, you need to go. I'm like, why? When you've just been knocked out, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm sick of telling you. And I'm like, oh, shit, shit. And anyway, so then we're in. We're in the ambulance, and me and Frank Mir are sharing an ambulance. He'd just been beating off um, Brock Lesnar. And me and uh, Brock, uh, Frank Mir in the back of an ambulance, feeling sorry for ourselves. And, uh, and I look up, and uh, I said to my old manager at the time, uh, who can go fuck himself, uh, <laughs> I, I said, uh, shit. You know, before when I said I was okay, obviously I was lying. I was like, yeah, now I'm okay. Oh, God. Mm. You know, so it does take a long time to come around from a true knockout like that. Jesus Christ. Well, there was a famous thing where, um, you know, Rogan went and interviewed Alistair Overeem after that one knockout recently where he was, you know, he was like, oh, you know, I, uh, he, I guess he was saying he tapped or, or was something like that. He had, and he just completely, you know, he didn't know where the fuck he was. He didn't know what happened. And Rogan afterwards, he was like, he was like, yeah, I don't think we should be interviewing guys after they get knocked out like that. I think it's a weird thing. And now this time, you know, Dan Cormier is so emotional, just couldn't like, you know, couldn't like there was the, the saddest moment after the interview 
was the moment where he kind of like in real time, you just watched him kind of realize where he's like, he goes, you know, he beat me once, he beat me again, you know, so I guess that's that. Like, it was just a sad thing where he was kind of like yeah. be- well, it, feeling it, it defeated. It was the realization. Yeah. The realization was beating me twice. But, but I've got to say, I had a ton of respect for Daniel Cormier in that moment to say, listen, because they said about the rivalry, he said, well, he's beating me twice. I guess there is no rivalry. To say that, you know, took a lot of uh, self-awareness and, and, and honesty. Yeah. And to be like that, even with the animosity at that moment in time, I was like, man, they were powerful words. They were powerful words, and I really respected him for saying it. But there is a rivalry, so because i got to be honest with you, I feel like that was well, the well, best there is a rivalry. There's still going to be a fucking rivalry. And when he sees him, they're still going to go at each other 100% because, yeah, listen, I mean, John Jones said it leading up to it, that uh, uh, leading up to the fight, fight week. He said, um, the thing that bothers me about DC is that he needs to understand that he's the baddest motherfucker on the planet apart from me. And once he accepts that, he'll be okay. But yeah. until he accepts that, then we got a problem. Or oh, it was something like that, something along those lines, which was a really good line from John Jones. Yeah. 